Hello and welcome to Fish Out Northwest. My name is Tommy Donlin. I'm proud of all the things. What do you think, Tommy? It's the best. Nice one. Hello and welcome to Fish Hunt Northwest. Dwayne Glenn coming to you from the Fish Hunt Northwest studio. Uh, yeah, once again, solo. Uh, hey, this is Friday. Typically we do our show on Thursday, so... Bit of an audible this week. We had some uh, some crew unavailability, and um, not Tommy. He would have been good to go yesterday, and it's just, hey, man, it's one of those things. We got to get our show, show in for the week, and uh, we had to uh, defer to tonight, Friday evening. So hopefully you can jump on here and join us. I know we got an important game going on right now. Last I checked, uh, Huskies were up, which is a really good thing to know. So uh, with that, going to get through the show. Lots of great content. Want to welcome everybody to the show tonight. Um, so glad you could join us. Uh, some great guests lined up and a ton of info to get through as we do each and every week. But before we get too far along here, I uh, want to remind you, if it's your first time joining us, jump on over to our webpage, www.fishhuntnw.com. There, you're going to find some insightful information and, of course, coupon codes for a tremendous saving. Edge rods, uh, for right now, going to continue through the weekend. I got the bosses over there at Edge, Alex and whatnot, to extend it through the weekend. FHN 30 on your edge rods and rod and reel combos. It is steelhead season, believe it or not. We're going to get into that in a little bit, but um, you're going to save 30%. Rod and reel combos and, of course, on the Black Widow and uh, First Strike uh, series. So be sure to check that out if you're Christmas shopping or haven't got those gifts yet. My gosh, make sure you take advantage of that through the weekend. We've extended it, and you need to to get that saving. So, got that going on. And then, of course, Phelps Game Calls. Fish Hunt NW10 is your coupon code to check out for Phelps Game Calls. All calls 10% off through Fish Hunt Northwest through the end of the year. So, take advantage of that. I want to back up a little bit and just remind you, yep, we are December 1st. It is officially steelhead season kicking off. Typically, it kicks off just after Thanksgiving. But um, we have some opportunity this year. We're going to break it all down for you getting into the show later on tonight. So why wouldn't you reward yourself with a brand new steelhead rod and reel combo, Daiwa reels, edge rods, first strike rods, the 30% off, man. I cannot tell you how much money you're saving. It's comparable to buying a lower level rod for the same price when you save that 30%. You're getting the very best rods in the Pacific Northwest, hands down. So give that a, uh, give that a look. Uh, tons going on and we got a ton of info to get to and through. So. Running down the show tonight, let's just get right to it. Robert Kratzer, Bobby, as he's known to me, uh, Angler's Guide Service and VP at Washington State Guide Association, North Coast Steelhead Options for the 2023-2024 season. That stuff just came out hot off the presses. It's very complex. There's a lot going on there. Bobby's going to break it all down for us so we understand truly what we get to go after and when and where out there on the Olympic Peninsula. Then we'll have Bobby back for a second segment, North Coast by the numbers, but also more importantly, updates from Washington State Guide Association. They're doing a ton for us here in Washington State, and you guys need to know, be aware of who they are and what they can do for you and, and the successes they are having. Uh, hey, if you haven't looked out the window, weather change is coming into or here. The first real atmospheric river of the fall is here. What does it mean? Gonna break that down for the, the, uh, the weather junkies and how does that affect our salmon that are in the river spawning currently? Uh, then also, I'm going to take a deep dive and try to unpack this WDFW Steelhead Town Hall number 2 that was last week. The Grays Harbor South Coast, how did we do and where are we sitting right now? Well, if you're living under a rock and not aware, the, all the fishing over here is closed for right now. Do we get it back open? I'm going to walk you through all that and hope to get some clarity. Then we're uh, inviting back to the studio buddy Shelby Ross, Ross Outdoor Adventures and Potholes Duck Taxi. Full report and how you can get on some of that outstanding and amazing action over there at Potholes for Ducks and Geese. 
And then we'll finish out the show with a little sardine wrap plugs for Coho. Are we going to show you, or we're going to show you a how-to lab on the water. Jumped on that the other day, albeit we're kind of towards the end of the season, but I had to get that out there because folks were asking for it, and it's applicable as we move forward into the spring. You can always use it for springers or keep it in your memory bank for next year. So lots of content to get through tonight. So glad a lot of you are uh, joining me this evening. Going to try to be interactive with you here on the screen as much as I can as we get through the show. Uh, don't go anywhere. We're going to jump out for a quick break. We come back. Robert Kratzer, Angler's Guide Service, and talking about this North Coast steelhead opportunity. What's it look like? What do we get? All that and more right here after the break. Fish Hunt Northwest. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dream through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here to the show, Fish on Northwest, Wayne England in studio, flying solo. No big deal. I am now immediately joined by our first guest this evening, no stranger to the program, no stranger to the show, Bobby Kratzer, Robert Kratzer, Angler's Guide Service, also Vice President, Washington State Guides Association. You can find him at www.anglersguideservice.com. Thanks for taking time away from the game, buddy. What's the score? It is 10-0 Huskies, and it's... They just got tackled, so it's fourth and four. So hopefully they kick a field goal or have to punt. Got so it. we're doing good. Thanks for the update. You should be uh, sideline commentary with that uh, exquisite uh, description. <laughs> you just threw it. <laughs> there, so. Hey, uh, let's get to it. We don't have a lot of time. We got a lot of information to go over. So you've been yep. well immersed in the uh, conversations that come before uh, final decisions are made, and they put together these uh, these seasons that we hopefully get to enjoy. So. First of all, out of the gate, you know, the feds announced early last week um, in an Olympic National Park news release that the park waters of the Queets and the Quinault rivers would be closed from now until May. The state jumped on board to support that uh, based on numbers they're seeing in conservation concerns. Do you think that uh, that move is warranted once again this year? Um, I think it's definitely warranted in the Queets Clearwater. Um you know, those numbers haven't looked very good for quite a few years. Numbers are way down. Yeah. Um, I'd like to, it would have been like to, nice to see a little up for salmon river stuff, but, but I get it. I understand that one. So I, that's not a big one. Upper Quinault, you know, there were some catchable numbers there, um, you know, that we could have access to. Um, but I also understand what the state's up against with monitoring and when you only have a handful of fish and your impacts are so close to yeah. that. You know, hard, hard call, but um, unfortunately, the conservation side of me and wanting my grandchildren to be able to catch steelhead in the future and not looking what the future sound looks like now, um, you know, I'm probably in favor of some of these things where I know other people aren't. Um, 
I think our rivers are in good shape that we have a really good chance of turning these things around a little bit. Yeah, so and let's, I let's, think uh, it takes some hard decisions to do that. Right, absolutely. Let's talk about some of the positives, some of the opportunity that we actually get to enjoy out there on the North Coast. Uh, we did we come out a little better than last year? Have we, we we improved with opportunity just a bit? Yeah, we did. I mean, we did quite a bit on the North Coast. Um, I mean, a fair amount. So the Quileute is very similar to last year. Um, the only change was um, on the sole duck. We're allowed to fish from our boat, from the salmon hatchery all the way down to the mouth. Okay. So that gave us about a seven or eight mile longer stretch. So increase that by seven or eight miles. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Going to spread us out a little bit. I agree. Palawa is 101 down. We can fish out of our boat. Um, and on the bogus hill from Mill Creek down, which is about a half to three quarters of a mile above the hatchery. Um, and we can fish down the mouth. The stretches above those, we could still fish, just have to fish from the bank. Yeah, and if so, anybody has spent the, any time around, like, you know, hiking around that upper bogus yield above 101, I mean, you know, that's some that's some great bang, bank angling opportunity, and sometimes it's nice to get back and fish that bouldery, you know, slot water and just kind of uh, take your time working your way through that stuff just on foot. Oh, it's great water. Great water in there, some great water in the upper Kalawa. Yeah. Uh, yeah, great water in the upper salt duck for bank fishing opportunities. So, no, I think we really did good on the Quileute. Um, could we have gone a little bit farther? Yeah, we probably could have. Sure. But, you know, staying conservation and giving us opportunity, we gained some. So I'm happy. Yeah, that's a um, good point. Down on the hoe. You're right. I want to talk the about, let's talk about that, that schedule that they unveiled. Uh, days per week, some of it we get back into the boat and have opportunity. Some of it we do not. Um, are you in favor of this type of a schedule? What are your thoughts on this schedule? I got it up on the screen right now for folks to take a look at. Um, you know, I've been involved in that conversation for a couple of months. There was a lot of just thrown around about how we are going to incorporate a boat fishery in the hoe, not only to incorporate a boat fishery, but to also do like a really good study on the effectiveness of fishing out of boats. Right. Um, there were lots of ideas thrown around. Some were going to be much more convoluted than the one that is up there now. Mm -hmm. um, that I think would have been even more confusing. So I think this is a really good plan. I think this is a good idea. I mean, we know that on Sunday, Mondays, and Tuesdays, you're going to be able to fish the upper river from Morgan's Crossing to Oxbow from the boat. Right. And we know that from uh, Wednesday to Saturday, we're going to be able to fish from Oxbow down from a boat. So there shouldn't be any confusion for anybody on that. Um, and the good thing is, is it basically gives you an opportunity to fish out of a boat on the hose seven days a week. Yeah, correct. I mean, there's, so there's a strong Whether or not record. you're, yeah, upper river or lower river, it, I mean, it gives you opportunity. And it, so I think it's a great plan. I don't know that we're going to get the whole season through with it. I hope we do, mm -hmm. but they're going to creel it closely. Right. And if we get, if we get to where we're pressing our, impact numbers a little bit they may have to forego the boat fishery right um but i'm okay with that because at least they're trying something and they're working in a positive direction and so i think that's wonderful that we're going to get those opportunities down there so i think on the north coast we gained quite a bit yeah i would agree with that out, and, and the other people side, out and so forth the other side of that is as you kind of alluded to one the things they've done the previous couple seasons perhaps have now lend hand to us gaining more opportunity and for them to mix and match this type of a boat in boat out type of schedule to compile the data in the creel surveys you know we've been speaking of this data collection for a number of years and now to finally have boots on the ground collect that data have comparables of fishing out of boats versus bank fishing and what those numbers look like side by side really lends hand to dfw moving forward to manage these fisheries more more uh precisely don't you think oh 100 yeah. percent. and i and i think this is like a big deal like so in when you, i mean i know you're going to talk more about the south coast but this is like a really big deal for the south coast yeah right. also yeah because the data that's going to be extrapolated from this information yeah i agree good hand in the future right and right. so i think this is a really important tool that they're utilizing 
to really figure out, you know, what they're going to get out of it. I agree. All right. Don't go anywhere. Going to hold you here through the break. We got much more to get into. Plus, we got to check out what's going on with Washington State Guides Association uh, most recently. So lots to still get to with you. So everybody hang in there. Going to jump out for a quick break, uh, a couple minutes, and then we'll be back right here in studio with Bobby Kratzer right after this break right here, Fish on Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied Boats will have it for you. Contact Allied Boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium is the largest local outfitter in the Northwest since 1975, providing thousands of people affordable outdoor gear. This summer, make your next outdoor adventure more affordable by shopping at our warehouse style pricing. We are a local Scotty dealer, offering sales, service, and repair. Located in Fife and Seattle, come visit us today. The outdoors await you. Welcome back in studio here to Wayne England with guest Bobby Kratzer, Robert Kratzer Angler's Guide Service. And uh, before the break, Bobby, we were talking about most of the things we ended up with and opportunities out there on the OP, uh, the North Coast, as it, as it were. Briefly uh, run through selective gear rules. Anything changed from last year? I would assume we're still no bait, uh, no scent, that type of stuff. Correct. Yeah, we're no bait, no scent, single barbless hooks um, on all applications. We did... We did have a little bit of a push for bait um, in the Bogashu and the Kalawa for the month of December for hatchery fish. Mm -hmm. um, we did not get that. Um, that'll be something we're going to be talking about this winter to try to incorporate into next year. Um, and I think maybe next year we'll have a good opportunity of getting that. But but for this year, yeah, no bait, no scent, single barbers hooks, uh, only one hook, and so forth. So same similar deal. But you know what? As fishermen we're finding out ways to catch these fish. I mean, yes, would it be nice to have bait? No doubt, no doubt about it. Sure. Reality is we're still catching a lot of fish without the use of bait. Yeah, so, I agree. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to get fishing. Uh, the one that uh, throws people for a loop when they come out with a uh, single point barbless hook, you know, some of the salmon regs, single point barbless hooks, plural, this is single point barbless hook. You're allowed one hook. So now as that pertains to our opportunities where we're back in the boats, fishing on the rivers and pulling plugs, you pull in plugs with a single single hook on there. We have to remove factory hooks down to just one hook. How do you clarify that? Yes. Exactly. Yes. You have to remove hooks. You have to have one single pointed siwash hook on the plug. Exactly. Okay. Nice to yep. get that out there because yep. people often ask. Um, all right. Let's uh, let's kind of jump into this before we run out of time. So you're vice president of Washington State Guides Association, and uh, you guys are extremely busy. You're always involved with meetings and doing a lot of things to try and, uh, you know, work towards conservation and whatnot. What have, what's uh, WSGA been up to lately? Um, you know, we're actively involved all the time. Like you said, I mean, we're constantly busy. So um, obviously we have 11 board members. Um, I'm, I'm actively involved here on the coast, um, some down on the Columbia River systems. But, you know, most of what we're doing right now is just super involved in all of the fisheries. We have... One of us that went to North of Falcon last year to represent all the guides and, and fishermen in Washington 
We're going to have two representatives going to North of Falcon this year. Oh, good. Um, nice. So that we can better cover that. So yeah. that's really good. Um, you know, myself, I'm super involved in all these coastal fisheries. Um, you know, people say, oh, town hall has been going on for a month. No, for me, it's been going on for three months. <laughs> yeah. Um, I have meetings and conversations way before any of this stuff starts. Right. Right. And so we're constantly involved in that. Um, we're going to be a little bit, um, going to be a little bit more involved this year with the legislative session. Um, we're really going to try to help secure some funds for the department um, regarding these coastal fisheries, um, trying to get the funds so that we can have the correct monitoring. I hate to see the upper quill not open. And the answer was we don't have the monitoring. For right. It. Well, I want the monitoring for it. Let's get, Let's the, get money. the money yeah. so that we have the monitoring to monitor all of our fisheries. And if we do that, then all of these fisheries will be more opened up. So, um, so we're actively doing that. Um, that's kind of the extent of it right now. Um, but we'll have a, we have a board meeting coming up and then we'll have our annual meeting in January or actually, yeah, at the end of January for the, at the sports show or first of February, I guess. Sure. And um, that is usually where um, our members, we have about 100 guides as members right now, Okay. Uh, maybe 25 regular sport anglers. Um, but that's where they'll give us our marching orders. We will come up with a list of like, what do you guys want to see? What do you want us to actively go for? What do you want us to actively work on? And so we'll do that. But meanwhile, we still have... Um, there is four board members that are on the uh, guide advisory committee with the state of Washington. Um, Doug is involved in the recreational, in a recreational um, meetings for the state of Washington for all recreational sport fishing. Um, we have um, Columbia River chapter that's super involved in all the compact meetings down in down around regarding the Columbia area. Right. So we kind of spread ourselves out and we're actively involved in everything and. I know that a lot of guys, it's a guide association. It clearly is. However, everything that we're doing for the guides, we're doing for all fishermen. Everything that we fight for is for everybody to go fishing and to be on the water. More fish, more time on the water, more right. everything. So right. us actively being super involved is helping everybody. Well, that's I want to tip my cap to you guys because all the efforts that you put in, even for folks that do not, you know, year in, year out, do not or have not booked trips with guides in the state of Washington or spend time fishing with guides. Uh, as a recreational angler in the state of Washington, you are benefiting from the from the number of hours and all the effort and the work you and your group are putting in in the countless meetings and all the regulations you're trying to be involved with. And, and now, you know, marching on Olympia, trying to generate the funds necessary for monitoring all those things. So, you know, hats off to you guys. You're doing really, really good work in the state of Washington. Folks, <laughs> need to go to the Washington State Guide Association webpage, check out what you're doing, donate monies, and support the efforts that you guys have going on because we all benefit. So uh, just want to thank you for all that work. Yeah, I appreciate that. And we ask people too, please, I mean, contact us. Right. Contact me. I right. mean, get my number. Contact me. If you got something, you got an issue, you got questions about a fishery or questions about something, please contact us so that we can inform you as to what we're doing and so forth. And just like any other organization, you may not agree with every single thing that's going to happen, but you got to agree on the fact that we're in there fighting in the trenches yep. for the better of everybody. Yeah. And so don't let one thing that you may not like persuade you from being involved when there's going to be nine other things that you're going to be in support of. Yeah, 100%. All right, mister. Well, uh, of course, we're up against a break, ran a little long, but the information with you is always valuable and I don't want to cut you short. So appreciate the time. He is Robert Kratzer, Angler's Guide Service, also Vice President of Washington State Guides Association, www.anglersguideservice.com. You got openings available for winter steelhead, you know, February, March? I don't have anything in February, March, but I do. Oh, I, have, I have two days in March. I've got about six or eight days in January. That's about it. Okay, I better get my trip booked. All right, pleasure. Uh, go enjoy yep, the game. Thanks awesome. for taking time out. Thanks, guys. Have a wonderful night. Yeah, Appreciate you all you do. I will do. Have a great evening. All right, Bobby Kratzer, uh -huh. Angler's Guide Service, www.anglersguideservice.com. All right, jumping out for a quick break. When we come back to Goni, where I'm going to 
Try to walk through this uh, Pineapple Express, this atmospheric river that we are currently experiencing. What's it going to do to our rivers as we see it right now? Jump out for a quick break. We'll be back right here at Fish and Northwest. Support from Northwest Sportsmen make Federal Ammunition the world's leading ammunition manufacturer. Federal uses the industry's finest materials, giving you reliable ammunition that delivers superb accuracy and optimum performance. Northwest hunters rely on Sportco to provide the best selection and prices in the Northwest since 1985. Sportco and Outdoor Emporium in Fife and Seattle. Your journey begins here. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, that's oh, oh. Oh, geez. Come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. We're going to show you how to make fishy reels. been here but you know it you've heard the sounds smelt the air and seen where your heart lands if not yet you haven't been here but you've longed for a destination near or far where the young and old find rest and excitement not apart you haven't been here but you're on your way to a place not far explore the dowels.com all right, welcome back here to the show. Hey, if you aren't aware, weather change is coming. The uh, so quote unquote, as they express on all the weather channels, Pineapple Express, atmospheric river, terms that we become familiar with. This is the first big wash of the fall season as we move towards winter, and it's a pretty good one. I mean, we got a number of inches of rain falling here, started yesterday, kind of getting really busy today. The next handful of days are looking pretty damp, like a lot of rain coming. Um, we're looking at a couple days in the mountains with up to two to four inches in certain regions out there on the coast where we just were talking with Bobby Kratzer. If you see that uh, red and blue on the uh, mountain peaks out there in the Olympic Peninsula, that's anywhere upwards of four to six inches a day, uh, multiple days in a row. What is that going to do? Are they forecasting for any local flooding? Uh, potentially, yeah. I mean, we're looking at river levels and watching maps and looking at the projections. And uh, we'll throw that slide up. Here's a uh, moderate level of flood conditions that are going to be taking place there. This is an example of, say, the uh, Chehalis. But if you look on the left of your screen, all those dots on the screen represent main stem rivers or tributaries. And a few days ago, most of those, and generally throughout the year, you know, they run clear or uh, with no color. And uh, as it progresses, they turn green, and then they get to yellow, and then you start seeing them turning into red. So a couple days ago, there were a few more turning green. Yesterday, we had a number of those in the yellow-orange. Uh, pulled it up today. A number of those rivers are turning red. And what does that mean? As you look at the graph on the right of the screen, uh, depicting the Chehalis in that particular region, it hits the red line up top, which is uh, you know, what they consider moderate flooding. So... What does moderate flooding do this time of year? Well, first of all, it shuts the rivers down. If you look at the span of that uh, upward trajectory and when it begins to come down, it's actually about a five to six day window where that river is on the rise and then in maintaining up at that level for quite some time before it starts dropping. Um, now, talking with some of the biologists, how does this you know, uh, uh, hamper or hinder uh, fish that have already spawned and laid in the gravel. Remember, we have uh, on the heels of a humpy year, we've had a pretty phenomenal uh, coho return. We've had uh, Chinook in abundance in certain areas, but other areas we struggle. And of course, an absolute amazing uh, chum return in most of this Grays Harbor region, south coast. Um, how does that affect uh, those fish that have already spawned, laid their reds in the gravel when we have this much water, this much turbulent, this much sediment, this much debris coming down the rivers? Well, um, first of all, 
timing of spawn is important. You know, the uh, the humpy has laid their eggs uh, quite some time ago. A lot of Chinook are done. Uh, a lot of the chum are already done in the first push of the coho are obviously done and we still have a lot of coho coming in on the heels of this which are going to be finding their way back into the rivers and the tributaries uh, <laughs> in the main areas and channels to try to get up there and spawn as this resends but you know uh, the main concern out here in this region would be your chinook they like to spawn mid channel uh, in you know areas that can tend to take on a lot of water a lot of volume a lot of turbulent um, though they're strong fish and they lay their eggs deep in the gravel, uh, they can move bigger rocks than say your smaller fish, so they're somewhat protected. But um, survivability of the chum, or excuse me, the Chinook could be a concern, um, which is not good for this region especially because we're fighting hard to get those numbers to come back. The numbers of chum that were in the gravel this year, and they're kind of on the periphery. They like to spawn off to the side and they seek out the channels and little creeks and whatnot. So do the coho. They like to get way up into those tributaries. So they can be somewhat protected and do okay. Um, what really hits it hard is if we get a tremendous spike, straight uptick of a lot of water right away, um, and a lot of turbulent, a lot of washout, lots of uh, trees coming down. This is one of those episodes that's gonna go up at a uh, pretty, I don't know, moderate pace for a bit, and then really peak in the next few days and have a few days of hard rain. So, you know, it, definitely some of the reds are gonna take a hit. Uh, Mother Nature finds a way. Um, fortunately, we had an abundance of some of these uh, classes of fish with an abundance of spawning um, uh, escapement in the gravel already, and the hatcheries got their take. So, you know, it's all not all doom and gloom, as I like to say. We can uh, hopefully look forward to a, a bountiful uh, smolt out migrant uh, happening here in the spring with the numbers of these fish. So, but we are on the sidelines for fishing for a couple of reasons. One, because of the weather. Two, because of the, uh, the politics and nature as it is. So, don't go anywhere. I'm gonna jump out for a quick break. When we come back, I'm gonna do my best to unpack what exactly is going on out here in the South Coast Grays Harbor region. Are we gonna get to steelhead fish? Are we uh, having the door slammed in our face again? Are we done with coho and no steelhead season? Don't go anywhere. I'm going to break this down the best for you that I can when you come back from this break right here, Fish on Northwest. Allied, the new leader in heavy gauge aluminum boats. Allied boats have standard reverse chine and lifting rakes to help you plane faster and run at lower RPMs. Allied boats have several models to choose from, ranging from a 19-foot Mustang all the way up to a 32-foot Liberator. So regardless of what type of heavy gauge aluminum boats you are looking for, Allied boats will have it for you. Contact Allied boats today to learn more about these incredible fishing machines. Hey guys, I'm Big Mike. Come on down to the Edge Pro Shop and see me. We've got all the best brands under one roof. We've got Hawken, Procure, Short Bus, Pro Troll, Yakima Bait, Get em Dry Jigs, Northwest Bait Scent, Daiwa Reels, North Fork Lures, North Wild, Brad's, Superfly, Rocky Mountain Tackle, and of course, the greatest rods ever built, Edge rods. All right, welcome back here at Fish on Northwest. So we're going to get right into this. South Coast Grays Harbor Town Hall uh, takeaways. Town Hall 2 takeaways. Where and uh, what did we get? What, how did we end up? Well, right now we're close to everything. Okay, first of all, we got to back it up. Um, we had a situation end of October going into November when we're speaking of even coho 
that the co-managers wanted to shut everything down. They were encountering a ton of chum in their conducted gill net fisheries. They weren't seeing the numbers of coho that they were happy with, so they were advocating to shut it down. Uh, the Seattle Times even did a hit piece on it to say, hey, uh, the tribes are very conservative, want to shut down because they're concerned with numbers. DFW took, took some posture and said, hey, we feel pretty good with the numbers. We don't have the data as of yet that we're comfortable with to say we need to shut down. We're gonna monitor the situation and uh, we're gonna continue fishing so we can continue to monitor and see how it pays out. Well, um, the right move, absolutely right move, Director Seusswind and staff, because as it would be, there is ample fish in Grays Harbor uh, relative to coho. They're continuing to come in as we enter into December, although we're not fishing for them, we'll get into that. But as it turns out, we may see numbers that double uh, expectation as far as or need of uh, escapement needs for natural spawners on the gravel. We may double that this year in the Grace Harbor region, which is fantastic, especially now that we're looking at these flood conditions and uh, that could be problematic. So the more fish, the better, uh, higher survivability and DFW made the right call as it pertained to salmon, even though there was this so-called uh, so conservation concern. Now moving forward, even though we should be fishing currently on agreed to fisheries out of north of Falcon for the coho, and there's an abundance of coho, so the river should be open for that. Problematic. We cannot conduct fisheries on one species of fish when we now recognize we have a secondary species entering the waters of which we don't have agreed to fisheries for. We cannot simply take the rules of engagement for steelhead, no bait, no scent, single point, single bar uh, barbless hook type of presentations, when we're out there chasing salmon with all different means and methods, using bait, scent, the whole thing. You can't just meld the two together and say, hey, let's go fishing. Um, <clears throat> it doesn't work that way. And DFW would never expect the co-managers to agree to any type of mixing and matching of that. You have to have defined rules so that regulations can be imposed and it can be managed and, of course, uh, policed if that folks are following the, the proper rules for species of fish, okay? So we don't have agreed to fisheries as it pertains to the steelhead. Uh, so because of that, they had to close the river for coho, which a lot of us are, you know, pretty bent about. I mean, that, that just is another year, three years in a row, they've taken away an agreed to fishery as it pertains to coho because they can't come to agreement with uh, co-managers on steelhead. Now, social media is blowing up. Everybody's throwing, you know, lobbing stuff at the commission, at DFW, saying they can't manage their way out of a paper bag. All these things are happening on social media. At the end of the day, it comes down to not being able to come to agreement with co-managers. Look, DFW has done an amazing job this year. Microscopic, uh, surgical uh, approach to this thing. They've come out with data points. They come out with creel monitoring uh, plans and how to conduct business, how to break these rivers down the Grays Harbor region to go after steelhead uh, and monitor the activity. They've secured funding through legislation for creel sampling, boots on the ground. They have numbers and ceilings per month, per river that they are going to monitor to be up against. And if we hit those numbers, if they have to close a river for three or four days, to the end of the month and they close it, open it back up as we move into the next month and continue to fish, monitor, have encounters, calculate uh, and gather data for future management reasons. Um, they've never laid a, an, a, a, you know, such a surgical approach to this thing. They've never laid a well thought out plan like this on the table that I'm aware of to the co-managers to say, hey, we wanna go fishing for these hatchery steelhead because we can't continue to let them just, you know, go bypass year in and year out, keep producing these fish and not go after them. And that becomes problematic down the road with other agencies that want to go after hatcheries. So we have to find a way to go after hatchery fish and monitor and stay off the wild fish. So here they present this plan and we think we're going down the right path. But the co-managers have made it clear that they're not going to fish Grays Harbor. They're not going to conduct their uh, gillnet fisheries. So right now, DFW is back in meetings this evening, as far as I've been told. They're not happy with the fact that we haven't got these fisheries. The, the co-managers have made it known they're gonna fish out there on uh, the Queets and the Clearwater, or the, the Queets and the Quinault, conduct their gillnet fisheries and their, their guides out there on the water. Okay, fine, that's your call. You haven't produced a um, document or have you know come to agree to fisheries. There's no agreement in that regards once again this year, but they're going to fish. DFW, has taken a pause to say, we're not fishing because we don't have agreement. Now, Director Seuss wanted to say, you know what, throw my hands in the air, we're going fishing. 
and that's what everybody would like him to do. And I would say, you know what, Director Suswin, go ahead and take your amazing plan, deploy it with all the research your staff has done, the program that they've put together, the money that you've secured from legislator, the boots on the ground, the creel sampling, collect the data for future management of these fisheries, and let's go fishing. But without that agreement with the co-managers, it becomes very problematic moving forward. You heard Bobby and I speaking earlier of the process soon to be here just after the first year. We all know to be known as North of Falcon. Um, driving a dagger between co-management, like I'm mad at you, we're going to go do our fishery, and I'm mad at you, we're going to go do our fishery. Uh, the demise of our fisheries will be the separation of co-management as we know it. So we need to come together and figure out what it is that's going to allow those co-managers, the Quinaults, to allow us to fish this Graves Harbor region. And I'm hopeful that meetings tonight through the weekend uh, find, some, uh, find some balance and find an ability to bring these folks together so that we can conduct these fisheries on these hatchery fish and monitor the impacts and the encounters on the wild fish and continue to manage these fisheries uh, under a microscope until we get these fish runs back. So that's what's kind of going on. Not a lot of time to uh, break it all down, but that is in a nutshell kind of where we're at. So, all right, best I could do in a few minutes, try to wrap that up for you. I'm gonna jump out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere, you come back. Shelby Ross, Ross Outdoors Adventures. We'll be here on the show talking about some duck and goose opportunity on the east side. Right after this break, Fish on Northwest. All Defiance boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why all boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. All Defiance boats come standard with large fish boxes that are fully insulated so that you can ice your fish properly all day. All Defiance boats are foam flotation filled and unsinkable for the ultimate in safety while fishing offshore. Before you buy any boat, stop by or call Defiance boats today to ensure you are getting the very best glass boat your money can buy. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. New days, new beginnings, new friends, new loves, new dreams, new goals, new scenery, new job. No matter what the next chapter holds, Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate will be there to help you find the new that's right for your lifestyle at any stage of your life. Better Homes and Gardens Real Estate. Expect better. We're going to show you how to make fishing reels. Welcome back here in studio. I uh, want to join us or uh, <laughs> invite to the show next a uh, longtime friend and good buddy Shelby Ross, Ross Outdoor Adventures, uh, www.rossoutdooradventures.com, www.ducktaxi.com. So, Shelby, we had a hunt planned here uh, last week and I uh, was looking forward to getting over there. You called me up and said, hey, I'm going to take a quick pause. Uh, the birds have left. And then, lo and behold, a few days later, of course, we already changed our plans, but they came back. Is this something you deal with throughout the season? Birds come and go uh, based on weather conditions. What's what's going on over there at these birds are just not happy with staying there in potholes? Well, I mean, the, the weather change uh, dictates whether we have birds or not. Right. And, uh, you know, I'd rather, uh, you know, you not uh, come over here and uh, we stare at the fog and, uh, you know, just tell uh, stories. We've, uh, we've told enough stories over the years and uh, <laughs> I'd rather... You know, have productive hunting and, I don't know, I'll call groups and tell them, hey, we just don't have a bunch of birds. Right. Well, most places don't tell me that. I'd like to take your money for 20 years, not just once. Yeah, there you go. So uh, kind of explain the uh, the layout, you know, the blind situation. So groups can, 
uh, call you up, book trips and whatnot, and you can handle, uh, you know, groups of two, three, five, larger groups, double blinds, whatever. Um, let's talk a little bit about the self-guided hunts. How do folks take advantage if they want to bring their own stuff, their own dogs, but have you transport them out onto the dunes to put in some hunts? So the non-guided deal is really popular and uh, guys that can, you know, halfway blow duck call and, uh, you know, know how to do it, have a little bit of experience. It's a perfect deal. It's a lot of reasonable to be priced and they run their own show and call the shot and uh, tons of groups uh, just love that. And it's been a thing since uh, like 1952. Clearly it works. Nice. And on uh, mondays tuesdays and thursdays it's uh, bring three or more and 30 percent off and uh, that fills up pretty rapidly with that special yeah absolutely and uh of course you know folks that come over want to hunt for a couple of days you guys have accommodations right there at uh, mardon how do you go about booking a house or a cabin or accommodations if you want to come over and hunt for two three days well you just call mardon to book your uh, your hunt and your uh, room at the same time and call me with any questions and it's uh, done Gotcha. Um, how's the hunting going to be over the next, uh, well, for the month of December, as we roll into December, what are you expecting? Well, tomorrow we're going to have uh, 15 to 20 mile an hour wind. Mm. And we're going to have really good hunting opportunity. We're going to, we're, we're going to have lots of shooting. We'll see how the hitting is. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, lots of shooting. Goes, but uh, yeah. we've been in this lull of, uh, you know, less than five mile an hour wind, fog and low visibility. And there's just not a bunch of bird movement. And I've told groups over and over and over again, the best opportunity has been from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. when everybody's picking up and driving in and leaving. Go figure. You know, it, it just that's against the traditional duck hunting deal where opening daylight is the best, and it kind of wanes from there. And right. it's like, no, no, just, just, just hang. And, and there's – opportunity and so that's the way it's been which is uh, a departure from you know years and years of duck hunting experience for everybody yeah hey one question i get for uh, folks fairly new to duck or goose hunting let's let's spe uh, stay specific on ducks the blind setups the decal decoy spreads those birds coming in at a distance of you know xyz what is your recommendation for beginners or novice uh, who want to get in on the duck hunt as far as uh, size of shot what should they be purchasing uh, for their ammo when they want to come over with their 12 gauge and shoot some ducks. So for years and years, three inch number two steel has been what we've recommended. Mm -hmm. And for years and years, we try to set the furthest decoy at 30 yards. It gives you a, you know, a, a range without having to, you know, a range finder and about 40 yards is your maximum range with number two, three inch steel. That's kind of been modified here recently with some of the new non-toxic shots. And yeah. I've been shooting this uh, Boss Copper Plated Bismuth, and it reminds me of my childhood. Mm. It's it's two and three quarter number fives. It patterns exactly like lead, and you can kill a duck at a distance much further than the thirty yards. That takes some shooting skill as well. <laughs> a little and bit, yeah. The rounds are not cheap. Right. But you just don't shoot cripples. You don't, you don't have the cripple swimming where you shoot 10 rounds at the cripple between the group. And so, you know, it's just not a bunch more money to buy those rounds, but it, it is just exactly like lit. Excellent, uh, excellent yeah. point. Well, uh, believe it or not, we are already up against a hard break here. So, uh Never enough time to get all the information out, but uh, we'll be coming over here in a week or so, filming a great episode with you, getting in the duck blind, looking forward to that. So thanks for taking the time tonight, buddy, and uh, we will see you soon. www.rossoutdooradventures.com, www.ducktaxi.com. Get a hold of Shelby, book your trip, and uh, get a hold of Mardon, book your room. And we'll talk to you, you very get, soon, my friend. You guys have a great evening. Thank you. Yep, thank you. All right, jumping out for a quick break. Don't go anywhere. Come back. I uh, got a little video we're going to try to spin in here. Um, how to quickly wrap your plugs uh, with bait for, uh, for salmon fishing. Jump out for a quick break. We'll be back right here at Fishing Northwest. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years, Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. 
Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima Boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah, big fish. Yeah, buddy, nice fish. Beauty, gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh yeah! Whoa! Oh! 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 Jeez, oh, come on! Nice fish. Nice fish. A Northwest favorite for almost 40 years. Arima boats are manufactured with pride in Bremerton, Washington. All Arima boats are built without any structural wood materials. That is why Arima boats are backed with a lifetime warranty. Arima can offer every boat with Honda outboard packages so that you can take advantage of the reliability and five-year top-to-prop warranty from your Honda outboard. Call or stop by Arima boats today and let them help you get into your very next boat. Yep, for sure. Oh yeah. Big fish. Yeah, buddy. Nice fish. Oh, beauty. Gorgeous fish. Bobby's on the board. We got a good one. Oh, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, geez. Come on. Nice fish. Nice fish. Hey guys, Dwayne England, Fish Hunt Northwest. We're out here on the water today. And uh, you know, one question I get quite often is, can you walk through the process or explain how to wrap sardine or baits onto plugs? Now it's the tail end of the fall season. We're still fishing for coho in the rivers and utilizing plugs is a great way to do it. And wrapping them with bait is going to uh, aid you in finding more success than not. There's really no downside to it as long as you do it correct. So. What I have here is some uh, Brad's KF-14, uh, size 14 plug is a great size plug to utilize for coho, even these late season B runs. Now, a few things you're gonna notice that I've done to the plug. One is that I've incorporated uh, some of these snap rings um, on the plug. I put one on the eye and that is for runnability. It makes the plugs run so much more true when you have this ring on the front eye and uh, maybe at a later point, I'll demonstrate that in, uh, to you and how it works. The other thing I've done is I put them on the pull points of where the hooks uh, connect. Now, the reason I do that is because I like to incorporate a number three or a size five, typically a size three barrel swivel onto my hooks. You can't do that directly to the pull point or the anchor point of where the hook is attached to the body. So you put a, a lock ring on there Snap on your swivel and then use your sidewash hooks. Now you can choose to run both hooks as they come from factory, or you can uh, simply run one off the tail end of the plug. Either way, the plug's gonna run really well. Uh, there's no downside to having both hooks on there. And the reason we put swivels on, especially for coho fishing, is because when those coho start doing that death roll in the water, if these hooks are anchored or fixed, oftentimes they're gonna rip out of the fish. So simply by incorporating the, uh, the lock ring or the snap ring, the barrel swivel and sidewash hooks, your land, hook up the land ratio is gonna go up exponentially. So let's talk about putting some bait on here. I have some filleted sardine or sardine fillets that I've salted overnight so they're nice and firm, okay? Now they get a lot of oil coming off of these actual fish fillets and that's what really gets, uh, gets the fish excited. They put out a lot of scent and it's really easy to wrap them onto your bait. So. We're gonna cut a piece off of there. Here I got a you know, decent size. I kind of look at the size of my plug and how much area I'm gonna cover. And if it's a little too wide, I can literally just trim this off each side. What I wanna do is make sure that the bait is running down the center of the plug so it doesn't pull the plug off to either side as it's traveling in the water. The other thing we're gonna do is we're going to put a small cut about 
two thir or a third of the way down the piece of meat here, okay? That is so that I can simply slide it up onto and past the eye of where the hook sits on there. Now, looking at that size of bait on there, it really fits the belly of that plug and it's not gonna hinder the performance of this plug. Now we just simply hold that in place. I take my Atlas Mike's stretchy string or magic thread. And we're just gonna multi-wrap this thing from the backside to the front. And you can pull it pretty tight because this elastic thread really bites into the meat holds it in place, okay? We also wanna make sure we move our hooks forward, or our hook forward, okay? And we're gonna wrap in front of the eye, holding that chunk of bait together. Okay, we're gonna multi-wrap that several times. Don't uh, be afraid to put too much on here. All it's really doing is anchoring that meat down um, onto that plug. We don't want it moving, we don't want it coming off, okay? Now, I move that hook out of the way. And we're gonna simply do a loop and a couple half hitches through the thread on itself. Pull that tight and pop it off. I can wrap a couple more on there, run some, run some half hitches through there, pull it snug, and it's gonna stay in place. The nice thing about the magic thread or the stretchy thread also, is that the tighter you pull that and the more it bites into the meat, you could literally just pop that off and more times than not, it's gonna stay in place. So, if you can see, we got the thread on the top, we have the meat on the bottom, it's symmetrical, it's fit within the footprint or the belly print of this plug. And when that is hooked to a line and running in the water, it's gonna put out tremendous scent. It's got great rattle, good color. Uh, the, uh, the KF-14 is a great size plug to use and um, that's pretty much it. That's how you wrap a plug. Give that a try and uh, hope you find success. Defiance Marine is the one-stop shop for the Pacific Northwest Angler. Defiance Marine guarantees the best price on a new and best service on a repower for your current boat. Defiance Marine is a Honda Premier dealership and one of the largest on the West Coast. Defiance Marine is a boat dealer who proudly sells Defiance, Allied, and Arima boats. All boats are built by West Coast fishermen for West Coast fishermen. Defiance Marine has all your boating needs to help you get out on the water. If you're looking for the best fishing rods in the world, you really do need to take a look at the edge rods. I designed and built new machinery, and I think this new machinery has enabled us to build blanks like no other company can build without this equipment. There is no other rods in the world that are as good as these rods. You owe it to yourself to take a good look at them. For more than 90 years, you've entrusted one brand to guide you towards living the lifestyle you've always dreamed of. Now you can entrust affiliated Better Homes and Gardens real estate professionals to interpret your needs and help you find the home in which to live your dreams through every stage of your home buying or selling process. And through every stage of your life, there's Better Homes and Gardens real estate. Expect better. All right, welcome back here in studio as we wind down the show. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Just a quick little insightful on the water how-to that we did the other day when we were out. And uh, lo and behold, it's right at the end of the season. But uh, you can certainly use that moving forward, hopefully. Uh, and you can pull that back up for a reference if you need to. So, had a great time tonight, albeit uh, went by rather quickly. Uh, don't know what you're doing this weekend. Plans of anything being outside. A lot of the fishing is uh, going to be compromised. But, hey you still got a late archery or muzzleloader tag, I recommend you get out and do that. That's exactly what we're going to do out chasing some elk for the next handful of days. So have a great week. Have a great weekend. We'll see you back here next Thursday evening. Back on Thursday evening next week with Tommy in studio, as far as I know. All right. We'll see you next week right here. Fish